Hey, and welcome to the latest episode of Wall Street Wildlife with Christoph and Luke. We have a banger of an episode planned because we watched the Tesla Robo Truck Cyber Cab, whatever the damn thing was. Um, f- it was there's not much to talk about. It was bullshit. <laughs> You were suspecting it was going to be a lot of bullshit, right? I I heard some folks saying it was a disgrace. A disgrace? They, I don't know about disgrace. Far as a disgrace, yeah. Uh, Gone. And by, by the way, uh, I am in. I am. If if you look at the background, my usual books are not behind me because I find myself in the fine foliage, New Hampshire White Mountains, uh, <laughs> in New England, hiking with my buddies. So I am in the middle of a men's group getaway. And so last night we got together and uh, <laughs> and uh, we I I coerced my buddies to watch the Tesla event with me. That's and uh, this is a little bit of a preview, but they were deeply, deeply cynical and unimpressed <laughs> about what they saw. Are you the Are you like the Tesla guy in the group, or do other people like have the cars or drink the tequila? <laughs> Or anything else? <laughs> no, it's actually a Motley Crew because I am a Tesla owner and long time, you know, Musk uh, follower of his story. Uh, another buddy of mine is also Tesla owner. But a third, our man off the street, was thinking about getting the Tesla and decided recently, due to Musk's politics, not to. Wow. So it's a Motley Crew. So we had a, a, a kind of, a, a, I would say, relatively objective oriented view like we wanted to be impressed but weren't really yeah i I was gonna set my alarm for like 4 a.m to watch it and damn i'm glad i didn't there was it was so lacking in substance i just i didn't get anything out of it so i made i don't know if you saw my prediction on x i uh i made a six part prediction so i've scored myself i think i get a four out of six i said we will see cyber cab with no in-car controls just a screen that was an easy one that's a, that's yeah. a win. Fully autonomous rides on Warner Brothers property, like table stakes, if he wasn't even doing that. Although yeah. I've got a skeptical view about that. We'll talk about it in a sec. I thought we would see like something of like an Uber like app for hailing a ride or something to, you know, like for, for cyber cab owners so they could see the revenue it's generated, at least show like a mock up of an app or something. But they didn't talk about that stuff. So I failed there. I thought we'd see. I think we hear about Optimus being operational in gigafactories and actually starting to, even if it's a bit smoke and mirrorsy, like perform yeah. useful work. We didn't see that, but we did see Optimus like wandering around the parting lot. But again, I've got a skeptical view about that. And, and also serving life. drinks and serving drinks. I think there is uh, like pouring cocktails or something like that. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 And then, uh, so I'm sort of two for two for four and my last two are a win, but sadly, uh, some Musk dates that we can ignore. Yep, check. And yep. Tesla stock will falter. Yep. Yes, well done. Mm. Uh, well done. I don't know if this is a, a, a much of a tangent, but I wanted to say that Musk's kind of cult of personality, this is the first instance where I felt noticeably uh, skeptical going in in the fact that we got his kind of, you know, the must distortion field, the dates given and the, this will, Optimus will be the best product of all time. I have now lost enough credibility with him that on the even baseline level, I'm thinking this is all, like you said, smoke and mirrors, nothing of substance. And I cannot believe a word that he's saying other than putting forth this gigantic vision. So it felt like like an empty hologram almost. Yeah, yeah, totally. And like if we if we just pick up on exactly what he did say, uh, his quote, we expect to see fully operational autonomous FSD in Texas, Texas, Christoph, and California next year. So that's what, 2025. Um, the FSD vehicles are going to go into production and hit the roads by 2026 or before 2027, let me put it that way. So like we're breaking that down, you've got a Model 3 with... Hardware three, I guess, uh, and you've got like the full FSD beta. Like your car's pretty smart, pretty good. So I think Musk is saying yet again, like for the tenth tenth year running, that's going to be supervised full self driving sometime next year. 
But we've and, heard that last year and the year before and the year before and the year before. So what's changed? Here's a little bit of, uh, I don't know if it's conspiracy or you thinking, but I think this is in part why Musk has all of a sudden gone all in for Trump. Because my suspicion is for that claim to be true, he needs all regulators as out of the way as possible. And the way he's going to do that is by backing the, the political candidate who basically will say, yeah, all right, if this is a kind of businessy relationship we have now, then yeah, I won't stand in your way. And then if that's the case, then sure, Texas might actually be a hands off, do what you want. Well, but I mean, let's let's remember, right? Waymo are doing this right now. Like, Waymo is the reason I'm actually massively underwhelmed by what we saw yesterday, because Waymo are out there. I don't know what regulations they're operating under, but they are doing unsupervised FSD in like Phoenix and Arizona and a bunch of other like cities. Um, so they must be operating under some kind of regulations that Tesla could too. The thing that's holding Tesla back is the software's not ready. Isn't the Waymo stuff, though, like really geofenced into, correct me if I'm wrong, like really l limited areas? Yeah, like, like I guess, like, I don't know, but like downtown in certain areas, but they're riding autonomously, right? Because we saw like the video a few weeks ago of them all yeah. like collecting in a parking lot at 3 a.m. and honking at each other and waking up the neighbors, right? So like that's genuine unsupervised riding. Like let's, I don't want to get too like negative on Tesla because I do think that there's something very important here. But yeah, and yesterday's event didn't touch on the meat and veg of this thing, which is like, I, I gather a Waymo vehicle costs around $180,000, something like that. It's like it's a it's expensive piece of hardware because there's LIDAR and all sorts of other stuff. And Musk is trying to put uh, the cyber cab on the road for $30,000, which really let's call, let's say sub $50,000, like who knows what it's going to look like in the first year. So that's like, that's much more affordable. So their innovation is around like a platform, a hardware platform that they can manufacture at really sensible cost. And they've got like a proven ability to mass, mass scale, mass manufacture these things, but they got to solve the software and they haven't done that yet. And like, I, I, was, I was a bit underwhelmed with even the, uh, the the full self-driving inverted commas uh, on the Warner Brothers parking lot, and the the Optimus is as well. I think there's a lot more smoke and mirrors going on there than you might think. So I spent the day watching a bunch of other attendees' videos, and I don't know. I mean, this is my own opinion. I get the impression that all of those Optimus robots, there's like thirty or forty of them out there. They're all just being operated by one or more, like a team of people behind the scenes. It's kind of fly by wire. Like some of them speak with different accents. Some of them respond like in a human way. So yeah, I, 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 this, I think it's another example of the software is not there yet. But again, incredible hardware platform and they should like get some acclaim for that. But this is nowhere near the final product. This, oh man, where to start? My own experience with FSD full self driving in my car right now has gotten ridiculously good. I don't, uh, but of course it's not ready because I don't know about that 0.1% where it won't handle correctly. And I'm obviously as a driver, not ready to take that chance, yeah. but I don't know if this is a contrary view to what you just said. I feel like they will solve the software problem in, in not too long from now. But again, I don't know if that's me just hoping or making shit up or, or what. Here's a line of thinking I took with my friends and over, you know, like breaking, trying to think this through. Anytime we're at, uh, I, I suppose civilization is on the cusp of a major leap of some kind. It is hard for most people, I think, to be genuinely, to embrace what that future looks like because it's a, it's too big of a leap. So we default to what we know, right? And what we know is parking lots and traffic, and this is an intractable problem, and no way in hell can this ever be other than what it is. So my, my bullish twist or spin, if you will, is even though I didn't buy Musk's sales pitch and none of the, 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 the shiny things and I didn't learn anything new, I did remember maybe is the word, that I believe in the vision 
that I think it is possible and it will happen sooner, whatever that means, and that it's a vision worth pursuing. And even though this particular event did nothing to make me think it's closer or I kind of left with this like ambivalent taste of, damn, that was terrible and keep going, keep going, keep going, like do it. I totally agree, right? This is a, I, I do like the opening to Musk's like chit chat on stage where he talked about like, do we want to live in a Blade Runner future or some like shiny, glamorous, glitzy future? And clearly, you know, you and I talked about, uh, you know, my, all of my investments a few weeks ago, we talked about my investments being driven by wanting to live in like a Star Trek world, not a Dune kind of dystopian sci-fi future. And so like the Cybertruck and the Optimus is, that is part of like the glitzy future I want to live in. But I wish yesterday hadn't happened because there was a lot of expectations from the market and from analysts around they were going to show something really material. And again, it's just like another visioning session, essentially, like hot air. Yeah. So let's get a little more concrete. One of our Patreons asked us directly, I have a 4% position. Is this, given yesterday's event, too much? Now, point one is obviously we need to remind everyone that it's uh, investing is personal. And so it, it can't, there is no correct number we could possibly give you, whether that's too much or too little, because that has to do with risk and your risk profile depends on your age and all of the other stuff, right? But that aside, my sense right now is because I'm actually in the moment cash poor uh, and I don't have more to add to Tesla, I am glad that this event is not the thing that all of a sudden is going to make the price jump because the end is near, you know, the, the finish line is obviously near. Um, and therefore I'm happy in a kind of contra uh, what's it called counterintuitive way that I'm going to get to buy even more shares at this price. A uh, quick second point though, is, is the stock too expensive given what we saw yesterday? And I think the answer to that might be yes, depending on just how much we could believe in Musk's dates, which is, I don't know. So TLDR for me is, I am glad the market is not getting clear evidence of further progress, which means I'm going to add to my shares over the next maybe year or two, you know, um, but then opportunity cost and all that. This is a stock I'm happy to accumulate into, uh, but it is expensive right now. And I was hoping to, I did think hard about maybe chopping in half yesterday. And I thought, no, screw it. Like I'm, it, it, I was, ex as I said in my tweet, I was expecting some pain. I didn't expect today's event or yesterday's event to be, to like light the stock on fire. Uh, I'm just taking a very long-term view. And if the stock sells off, maybe I'll add a little bit more. I probably wouldn't let this get much above a, five or six percent position for me you know right now just because it is still a car company despite all of the incredible vision like i want to see something tangible in terms of cybertruck optimus you know some some other product line right in this moment it's still a car company and yeah. i think this is this is reminding me of a moment in nvidia maybe two years ago mm -hmm. where remember the quarter where they were having crypto issues and supply and demand issues. And at that moment, it kind of, you know, scary, it's expensive. And you're thinking, okay, this company has all kinds of warts on it. But those who deeply understood the vision and where it was going held, and then obviously were massively rewarded. I think this is a somewhat analogous situation, just that the time frame is unknown. I think the correct way to approach Tesla in your portfolio is to hold your nose at the at the valuation, hold it up, uh, regard Musk's antics. And if you think in, I don't know, five years, right? In five years time, you will probably be glad to have added in these kinds of moments, even so, though it, of course, might dip a lot further. But it's not going to be like a 10 bagger from today's, well, it looks like it closed at about $680 billion today. Like it's going to be a long journey to get to like a 10X return, whereas NVIDIA suddenly went wild. 
Right, because NVIDIA was a spring coil, whereas Tesla, obviously, there's too many unknowns. Yeah, I mean, even even like, what does that mean if, for example, things go well and full autonomous driving is achieved in Texas and California? Like, how does how would that move the share price exactly in 2025, oh, right? That would be massive. Yeah, that would be massive. Um, wait, 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 I'm sorry. I think I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying if that were the case, you think all of a sudden uh, Tesla would sell that many more cars, even though it wouldn't be available in the majority of states? No, the, the, first, the day they can actually start operating autonomous vehicles, uh, the stock is going to catch fire because suddenly, like the cyber cab is no longer a pipe dream and a vision. It's actually real. Like it's then just a manufacturing challenge and Tesla are the masters of manufacturing. At the moment, though, they have this impassable wall, which is the software. Okay, I see. I see. Yeah. yeah. So you know, to go back to to go back to the four percent question, I yeah. think my takeaway from this is four percent to me, not knowing anything else about the context, is that is a reasonable position. And if I had, I actually think I have more than four percent in Tesla right now. And if it's me, I'm excited at the opportunity to continue adding at these levels. I just yeah, want to maybe, um, we talked yeah. on we talked on last week's episode I think uh, or two weeks ago we talked we responded to Deb's question Deborah's question about like how would you invest a thousand dollar portfolio and we said oh you maybe break it up into like ten or twelve pieces like I'll be happy to have Tesla as one of my ten positions in my portfolio so you know if you've got a smaller portfolio and you're adding new money and this isn't going to like wipe out your life you know maybe a ten percent position is perfectly fine. Right. Right. On, on the back of, like NVIDIA, I think Tesla is the only company I could think of right now that legitimately has a shot at becoming the world's most valuable eventually. Yeah. My, my money's actually on SpaceX, which is another one of Musk's oh, right. like, yeah. portfolio, right? But yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. This is what was weird about sort of thinking about what we wanted to say. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's this weird taste, like aftertaste that's like, why was it so disappointing while the vision, right, while the vision still remains mostly intact? And I think it also, I, I hate to div divert us too far away from the main point, but I do think there's something about the, obviously the US election is less than a month away. He's being seen in a very different light as the richest human on the planet now advocating so hardcore for one political candidate that is obviously problematic in all kinds of ways regardless of your political leanings like it's a mess it's like a weird muddle yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I've, uh, like i used to be invested in tesla because of musk and i suppose these days i feel like i'm invested in tesla in spite of musk yeah, yeah and you know if my buddy comes on to give his take in, in a little bit he's one data point of somebody that really wants a Tesla, he's really open-minded and will not do it any longer. That can't be, I mean, pure like business 101, that just, that needs to be either the world's greatest exception of all time where the CEO could get away with something like this or the law of business gravity will return Tesla down to earth because you can't do this kind of shit and like literally sabotage your own company <laughs> And, and and it'd be just fine as well nothing had happened he's, he's, he's done it time and time and time again right uh so now yeah, ultimately these are like stock promotion events as opposed to uh like anything that's really meaningful but let's not let's not lose sight of like some of the good things so what like what are the good takeaways from yesterday like the car looks great the uh then the van the cyber van well, I mean, not not practical with like no ground clearance, but like a nice sort of, what do you call those things? You know, you have like a prototype in a showroom yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah, like cool prototype, I'm sure, you know, directionally, but there's nothing new. Like we've seen, we've been seeing that style of vehicle in like magazines right. and car shows for decades, right. but it looks great, looks great. And I think Optimus was the thing that uh, impressed me the most. Like the robots look really good, even though, I don't buy for a second that they're actually walking around autonomously. Like maybe it's partly autonomously, but I think they're all being piloted 
by a human, but that's fine because that's the software and it's the same software challenge as FSD. So I get that they've got to solve that, but it looks really good. And it looks like I had a funny conversation with a buddy on WhatsApp today. He's like, uh, robots do not need to be human shaped. They need to be customized to the task they need to do. The only robot that needs to be human shaped is a sex robot. And he's clearly wrong because people can have sex with any shape thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you have like a human shaped optimus or a couple of them in your house let's leave the bedroom aside but like you know cooking and cleaning and maybe making the cocktails for you and the boys when you get back from your hike yeah yeah i would okay yeah me too yeah. right for sure and yeah. if i can get one for the price of a car for real yeah mow the lawn and do all clean the floors all that right roombas and all that yeah oh uh, you know what i i realized what the most disappointing for me in the sense it's because I didn't learn anything new other than, like you said, sci-fi fancy prototypes. I wanted something like, I, this is going to be so boring sounding and disappointing, like an update or a new announcement around a HVAC product. <laughs> like, because I know that like, you know, in previous teasers, like somehow I learned, I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm not making this up, that they were working alongside solar panels and batteries like a Tesla version of a better AC unit or something like that. That would move everybody has HVAC problems. Everybody. It's not the uh, it's not the cyber aircom event though. It was the Robo Taxi event, right? Right, but you know the way the you know the the one more thing and yeah. right now sure. energy is the you know huge right true but anyway point being nothing new right the yeah. most the what i got most excited about was the stupid slide about you know getting rid of parking lots and yeah. replacing yeah. them with trees i'm like oh yes my you know my liberal tree hugging self is like that's <laughs> i don't know that's sell me more of that but in summary it comes down to are you selling buying or holding and your take right now is what uh i kind of wish i did trim yesterday but i took a no regrets decision to leave it alone so fine so be it um i'm definitely not adding i'm not i'm not trimming either i'm just going to sit and hold i'm about a five percent position that feels about right to me yeah and for me i don't see any urgency to add but i'm glad that i seem to have a longer runway in which to add at valuations that are still kind of lofty do you, sorry, sorry for clarity do you have any tesla in your portfolio today Yes. You do? Okay, right. So Yes. In fact, let me, yeah. I mean, I could tell you uh, in my, well, in King of the Jungle, hmm. uh, I have, you know, it's only one of five companies that I own. So in King of the Jungle, it's a 1.65%. And in my real world portfolio, it is 4.5%. Look at that. Okay. There we go. About, both about the same then, yeah. Cool. I think so. So you and I are about the same. And you, what, what's your view? Buy, hold, sell. Hold and add in the coming months. Okay. Is there a like? I don't really do price targets, but I know you do. Is there a particular price you would set a limit at order out or something? Mm, this is this is six hundred eighty totally million. million. I haven't really number. looked at the numbers recently um, in, in terms of ratios and stuff. But what's the price now around what 200 again? It kind of fell down to like 210, something like that. What's a 680 billion dollar market cap? I don't know yeah. what the share price is. Right. I would probably, I don't know, it would probably need to lose another 30 percent for me to get really enticed to add. Right, that's substantial. If, or if it dropped 30 percent, then yeah, I'd probably be considering adding too. Um, yeah, yeah, I was like, this is one I'm just happy to hold for like at least another decade unless some things go seriously wrong yeah yeah I, th I think i think it's worth saying though because we both own the stock if i did not own the stock today i i think this is a good candidate to buy or to consider buying so if you're listening and you don't own tesla and if we haven't completely put you off the idea of uh the car company which it is today then um yeah you like stick it on take a proper look at it as an investment go check it out on finchat.io there's some really good numbers on there it's a great tool go read about it on your favorite research services and uh see what you think but i think it's worth that it's worth considering for a growth oriented portfolio exactly it's 
legitimately uncommon to come across opportunities in the investing world that could be that are paradigm shifters. And that remains the case regardless of the relative flop of the presentation. Yep. I actually will say we um our our friends over at Seven Investing, Simon Erickson, he's put together a fairly detailed valuation model for Tesla. So if you are thinking about investing, go check out seveninvesting.com. Uh, I think there's still a one dollar deal to become a subscriber, and you can check out Simon's valuation model for one buck. Speaking of, I had one more thought around Tesla, Musk's presentation style,、hmm. and my buddies all felt that it was extraordinarily sloppy, like、yeah. almost unprofessional. I mean, we know the way Musk speaks is. Kind of weirdly stuttery, and as though he doesn't put much effort into polish.、Yeah. I made the observation though, and see see where this lands with you, Luke. That when I watch Apple presentations, post Steve Jobs Apple presentations, let me clarify, they are so polished that I feel like they are corporate ads aimed at. Almost a non-human because of the, you know what I'm talking about, right? If you ever watch the Apple presentation, this is the most beautiful product, and it's the most is like feels so so shiny that there's no humanity left. And I was left wondering, in terms of salesmanship, whether Musk's kind of stuttery, sloppy, off the cuffy kind of remarks. Are regardless not the better path because at least they're authentically human, <laughs> like almost like perversely. Wow, only a human could have made a presentation this sloppy, which means there's still a beating heart under there somewhere. Maybe, like probably more than any other time I've seen him speak, I got the impression he was just taking the piss.、Oh. Like I don't, it was a bit weird. Like he weirdly. Deliberately, I guess, mispronounced "robo van." Like he, he initially was calling it "robo van." Like what? What you're about? Are you just misreading the auto cue? Are you just? Is it like an inside joke that you guys are having? And he's he's forgotten that like the audience have no idea about this inside joke. He just sounded like a bit of an idiot, to be honest. It's weird, right? It's weird. We know he's the world's richest man with billions and billions of dollars. We know they obviously took a long time with this event. It was pushed back. So how hard is it, unless he's so sort of like engineer minded and oriented that it doesn't even occur to him that there's like this rhetorical side that, to things, which I find hard to believe, to be honest. Even if he doesn't care, maybe in the end, because he's an engineering guy, whatever. It's all about the machines in the end, blah blah blah. It's a little bizarre. I mean, maybe like his buddy Trump, right? This is. His version of like Trump saying I could go out on Fifth Avenue and shoot someone and I'd still get voted in, like Musk is kind of doing the same thing. He's like I could, I can just come out and shoot the shit, say literally anything, and you guys are going to be like whoop and cheer because I got like an army of robots behind me. Yeah, yeah. I've been wondering about Musk's、uh, politics and morality for some time now, but at the end of it, I still do deep down believe that he's. Trying to be a force for good, and somewhere underneath the sloppiness, and I still think the mission is oriented in the correct direction. Yeah, like I do, I don't really care. I do wonder to the extent he's actually involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the firm. Like I'm sure he sets the strategy and the priorities, and he's like the front man. Does he do any more than that these days? I don't know. I'd always be happy if the answer was no. He doesn't. Hard to say, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's not relevant, right? It's just, yeah. If he wanted to make Tesla the world's best company, that he has plenty of problems and loopholes and in complexities to solve.、Hmm. That we know all the other things he's doing are taking away from that because he needs. He's a human. He only has so many hours in the day,、yeah. so it doesn't matter if he sleeps none at all or any of the other stuff. The calculus is simple. He's not doing as great a job for Tesla as he could, and right now we're we're suffering from it, and it's、yeah. it's it's visible in the lack of、uh, professionalism. Yeah, but then you say that right. I've got my Highland on the driveway. It's a beautiful car. 
where, and like clearly like this the stuff is getting better as a hardware company like they're almost unsurpassed as far as i'm concerned it's just they haven't got the software figured out even the freaking software in my car is bullshit like the uh, implementation of youtube music and spotify are just diabolical right? they mm -hmm. just don't work but anyway whatever that's like Oh, it works for me. So I don't, is that a UK issue? Maybe. Who knows? All right. Well, it was good to chat. Unfortunately, it wasn't like us getting together going, wow, incredible. Like our stock has doubled in price because like they're actually out doing FSD drives right now. That They seem to be still very far from that. But nonetheless, it was good to see the uh, the fun and games. And I was, I've probably got more insight watching the uh, attendees videos and seeing the Musk presentation itself. Oh, actually, can you speak to that just a little bit? Because I've been hiking in the in the mountains. Did you see anything of what it looks like to take a ride inside the robo car? The yeah, robo yeah. So, so a couple of them. I mean, it's clearly, it's kind of like a, it's such a controlled, safe environment. And it's basically like a Disney or Warner Brothers, like ride in theme park, right? It's just an auto, it's a vehicle following a predefined path. Okay, sure, there are a ton of other vehicles on the road, but also you could see like there were a ton of handlers like everywhere and all of them seemed to have like smartphones and probably like an emergency like stop button in case if something like it is about to go up shit creek so a highly highly controlled environment but the car itself looked beautiful and the inside looked great and uh, the vision is right but we've we've known this vision for a ton of time can you actually say just a little more about what the inside looked like cuz you know watching the presentation mm -hmm. i only had a, you know that a bit of that outsider's view in yeah yeah two it seats kind of you, saw like the goal, you saw the gull wing doors but like two seats just one big screen and it seemed to be oriented around so when the guys got in it was like actually i'll, I'll splice into the if you're watching us on youtube i'll splice some of the video in but a couple of videos i saw like the passengers would get in the car would be like buck up your seatbelt and they'll click the seatbelt in the doors would come down they'd choose a destination they had a choice of like two or three destinations like new york which is like a set or west world or somewhere else they picked the destination they both had to press like start then uh, the car set off and it, it it drove pretty quickly like i would guess like 25 30 miles an hour it wasn't like nannying around um and the in-car experience seemed to be oriented to entertainment so it was like it was trying to push you push the riders towards like watch a movie so you know they could sit and watch like blade runner 2047 or whatever while they're going to the destination all right so tesla to still to be determined tesla's fate and taking over the world to be determined yeah. yeah like they've been beaten to the punch already by waymo in terms of actually like achieving the goal but can waymo scale out at the right uh sort of uh, operationally income positive i don't know maybe not tesla certainly claim to be able to if they can ma manufacture the cars for like say sub fifty thousand dollars like you can see how clearly that would make sense to put a vehicle on the road that costs that to generate, you know, even if I'm paying like Uber rates or even I'm paying like a tenth of the Uber rates. So, and actually, like, why am I excited about this, right? Like, who is this good for and bad for? Because I was thinking about this for a different tweet I posted the other day. Like, this is clear, if they do finally solve FSD, right, this is clearly very good for Tesla themselves because they are going to sell a shit ton of vehicles. This is great for riders, like individuals, like I use my Uber today and it costs me whatever, like 50 bucks to get into central London. And maybe I can get into central London for like half that or less, and maybe eventually like five bucks. So fantastic for riders. The, the sort of the, the other party in the case, in the business case, just this does not make sense to me whatsoever. So here's your, like, turn your analytical view on this, right? Because Musk's, uh, Musk's sort of spiel as part of the vision is, oh yeah, you know, you could be like a shepherd and you own like 10 of these vehicles and then off they go and they'll earn you like all this money uh, while you sit back in your armchair and smoke your big sat cigar like you're doing right now. Like if they finally solve this, at, okay, for the first couple of years, I'm sure there'll be a ton of money to be made by anyone who's got a car that they can send off and run as a taxi. But uh, like that Jeff Bezos quote, your margin is my opportunity. If there's any good or service where you can essentially buy this thing for, let's say, $50,000 and it can generate, let's say, $50,000 a year, right? Suddenly, you know, Tesla won't be able to sell those things fast enough. They absolutely won't. 
and the of when demand when supply meets demand like the prices will come crashing down and tesla will be able to control the pricing i'm sure they're always going to take their cut but if they're not the only player in the market, if there's other Chinese manufacturers and maybe Waymo at more scale or some NVIDIA drive cars out there doing the same thing, because they're all going to copy each other as soon as someone gets it really figured out for real, then that's going to force like prices down to the lowest common denominator or become like a race to the bottom. And that's great for riders, but that's not going to be great for the people, the shepherds who own their fleet of cars, because like the, the uh, income per mile driven is going to like come cratering down. I realized I have a question for you. Hmm. I have two Teslas in my family, mine and my wife's both happen to be red. <laughs> One of them is an original 2018. I got in make because I waited in line and I was one of the first people to actually be on the road with it. It has only 36,000 miles on it. So over six years, quite, quite low mileage and FSD. This would be precisely the moment where selling it makes the most sense because there's low mileage. It's still, uh, you know, there's still value in there. But the reason holding me back mostly is in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, wait, this whole shepherd thing, if Musk, if there's any truth to that at all, and if, for example, like things go Musk's way, then if this car could be on a road in Texas where I live, in 2025, which is only a handful of months away, then might not that be a really might not that be a really bad decision from the shepherd businessy standpoint? Because if this car could all of a sudden make me ten thousand dollars just driving around, then obviously that's a, that's a horrible mistake in hindsight. What would you? What would? You, how, how do you advise me? Um. I don't want to dash your hopes, but uh, like the latest version of the Model 3 is, I think they call it Hardware 4. And then anything up until, like, say, start of this year was Hardware 3. And I guess uh, your wife's one is also probably also Hardware 3. It was like an earlier Model 3. I, like, at some point, let's say the latest Musk, Musk date, they will solve FSD and they'll get like your Model 3 out doing it. So I could see it maybe, like, it'll certainly be the hardware for cars first. But then it's another question, can they, is there enough resolution in the cameras for the hardware three vehicles to actually be able to do that? Because I can't see Tesla doing, like, a recall to upgrade the whole sensor suite. Yeah, so, like, maybe, but you might find your second-class citizens uh, with the older vehicle, maybe even my vehicle won't be, like, adequate. You know, maybe they're going to need hardware five, hardware six before they finally actually solve full FSD. And because, I mean, like a hack they could do, which I'm sure they're thinking about, is a bit like Amazon Go did with their supermarkets and got like lambasted for it. There could be a Tesla control room somewhere with like a super shepherd just keeping an eye on like their allocation of a thousand cars. And if any particular car gets into like a complex situation, it just gets like bumped up a queue and then an operator takes over and navigates, you know, reverses out of the gap it got stuck in or whatever it is, or, you know, calls the police if it's just like run someone over. So like, so maybe they're going to need like another generation of hardware with like something more robust than whatever, whatever like crappy mobile connectivity they've got on the car. Cause my, my phone will keep connection when I'm driving around, but my car will drop its 5g connection all the time so i think it's probably a substandard antenna mm -hmm. so there's, there's probably a hundred reasons why like the hardware may or may may not be adequate so what i'm hearing you say is <laughs> don't get my hopes up <laughs> uh hanging on to the six-year-old tesla for purposes of it becoming one of the flock that's going to make me money is probably delusional in terms of either 2025, either in terms of timeline or in terms of hardware. And if you add those probabilities together, then the odds drop even lower. Well, if you, if you buy what I was saying about uh, like race to the bottom, it's probably delusional to think that anybody's Tesla will make them any kind, anything approaching serious money other than in like the first couple of years maybe where 
the world is like supply constrained but they'll be quickly be so many on the road because the economics will be so incredible that if you're making like you you probably won't make more than a couple of bucks Hmm. cars cars and houses are depreciating assets christoph yes sir right well badger thank you for for that no holds bar no feelings hurt no uh holding back it was good. It was good to connect. Thank you for making time on your hike, even though your buddies have now all ditched you and gone to the pub, hopefully, without you. Well, you know, they, wherever they are, I have my, I have my, <laughs> my parting gift. Okay. I'm lucky, you're, you're lucky for us, you're not home alone with an optimist, so God knows what would happen. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my friend. This was a impromptu, unstructured episode of Wall Street Wildlife, but I hope you got some value out of our random witterings. You can find us on all the social media channels, uh, especially on patreon.com slash wallstreetwildlife. Join our Patreons, become one of the tribe, uh, and we definitely prioritize your questions first. We might even do a whole episode on one of your questions like we did two weeks ago. If you want to chat to Christoph and I, or just tell us what idiots we are, you can find us on X. I'm at seven Luke Hallard. And I am at seven flying platypus, but my new preference to communicate with listeners is over on Patreon. So find us there. Are you ready to become a beast of an investor? Your journey starts here. Rawr! <laughs> A reminder that the people on this program may hold positions in the companies that are mentioned. Buying and selling stock carries financial risk, which could include loss of capital. The views in this program should not be taken as personalized advice. Before acting on any of the information provided, listeners are encouraged to consult a financial or tax professional.